Hey, I think I figured out who Solomon was paid to kill. Billionaire philanthropist Christian Dahl. How did you? Organophosphates, jet oil, airport. It's like we could be twins. Connection. Conjecture. OK, so maybe Gloria was telling us the truth. Maybe Sarah was having an affair. Well, that makes perfect sense. Sarah was separated from her husband, Vince. And after long, grueling days at work, she'd go home to a cold, empty apartment. Feeling lonely, betrayed, she seeks comfort in the arms of this mystery man. And she decides that she wants her husband back, so she writes his mistress, Mandy Bronson, off the show in order to save their marriage. And her next step would be to get rid of the other man. So maybe the other man didn't go off quietly into the night. Do you two practice this when we're not around? They told me he was shot in a mugging, and now you're telling me he was killed here in my apartment? Not him, his wife. His wife? What kind of family was this? All right, so you and I are married. We are not married. Relax, it's just pretend. I don't want to pretend. Schedule like it. OK, if we're married, I want a divorce. Are you two like this all the time? Yes. yes. All right, we're not married, but they were. Let's say the doorman's right. Melanie gets home about 4 o'clock. She'd have to make dinner for the kids. Then Sam comes home. Baker's hours, around 6 o'clock. Figure kids have already eaten. So they're what? Um, watching TV in the bedroom. In my bedroom? Shh, on a roll. They have a fight? About the affair. About Philadelphia. Things get heated. And she turns her head. He whacks her with something. A pot. Or a pan. Bam, fractures the skull. It's over. Except the kids are still in the bedroom. He's got to figure out a way of getting her out of the apartment without them seeing it. Hallway bathroom. He needed to buy time. Okay, so he um, he puts the body in the tub, closes Wait. the door, and tells the kids that mom went to the store. Which, according to the case file, the doorman was never able to substantiate. Okay, so no car. How does he get the body out of the apartment? Maybe he hailed the cab. Yeah, maybe the cabbie and the doorman helped him stuff the body in the trunk. How much do you tip for that these days? The doorman. Castle, I'm joking. What? Mrs. Finnegan, what is this? Oh, well, that's their engagement album. It just came. Sue made it for the wedding. Every guest was going to get one. This looks just like the... The Arctic brochure Fletcher handed out. You said Sue made this? Yes, she's a graphic artist. How long has Sue known all these? Oh, I don't know. A year, maybe? Sue is Fletcher's partner. It's the undercover lover, Con. Sue is the scout. She gets close to Elise first, learns everything there is to know, paving the way for Fletcher. Who comes in with a playbook of all of Elise's hopes and dreams, and voila, it's love at first sight. No, 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 something doesn't quite track. Why would they fake Fletcher's death in such a public way? They had to know the police were going to get involved, exposing their con to a lot of dangerous scrutiny. Unless Fletcher really is dead. If her dad is right and Fletcher really fell in love with Elise... And was going to give up his con man ways. Then Sue stood to lose a fortune by not finishing the con. And if Fletcher married Elise, then Sue had no chance of pulling off the con on her own. So Sue takes matters into her own hands. She kills Fletcher, shooting him in the face, making sure positive ID is impossible. Bingo. But what about the phone call from Stephen? Well, she must have faked it somehow. Why? Because the, the con, con is, is still, still on. on. Unless... That isn't Christian Dahl. It looks just like him. Dummy. Not you. The on in the cockpit. They switched out real doll for dummy doll. Magnus didn't build a triggering device for an explosion. The arm he built was for doing the pre-flight check. The whole thing's an automaton. That's the magic trick. He made it look to the world like Christian Dahl was still on the plane, the same way Tobias Strange made it look like he was still in the cabinet when the swords went in. And then he used the catering box to get the dummy on board and Christian Dahl off. And who's piloting that plane? Christian Dahl. Only not from the cockpit. He had it rigged to fly via remote control. See? Zalman puts the box in the van. There's probably a console inside there linked to the plane's avionics. Dahl takes off remotely, flies out over the Atlantic. And then he detonates the explosion, and everyone thinks that he's dead because everyone's seen him on board. Only Dahl is very much alive, and there's only one person in the world that knows it. Zalman. And as long as he's alive, he's a threat to Dahl. So Dahl has to tie up that one loose end. But he can't risk anyone knowing that he's still alive. So Dahl has to kill Zalman himself. What? Nothing, so what do we do now? 
Well, it's four days since the accident. Christian Dahl's probably in some non-extradition country with a chunk of his fortune by now. Yeah, probably. Wearing T-strap shoes and a country suit, I could tell that redhead was a hick off the cop. Wait, what did you just say? Well, that's just how Joe described her in his diary. No, the, the part about the shoes? T-strap. It's when the strap comes over the... Yeah. Can I just call you back? Okay. Take a look at this photo. There's a shoe next to the car, and look at what kind of shoe it is. That's a T-strap. You don't think. If Vera was at the club that night, she'd be dressed in an elegant dress and... And heels. This isn't Vera. This is Sally. Yeah, but it can't be Sally. The bartender said that he saw her months after the murders. Unless... He, he lied. lied. But that was over half a century ago. Why would he lie about that? Beckett, I just realized something. Huh? I can't give you anything but love. What? That's what was playing when we interviewed the bartender. Right. Right. He said that that was the best version of the song. It was Louis Armstrong's version. In Joe's diary, he says his favorite performer is Satchmo. What's Satchmo's real name? Louis Armstrong. Put it all together. The answer is clear. Mission accomplished. Right. He didn't say he actually stole anything. The mission was to make it look like a robbery. And the best way to make it look real, to fool the police and the insurance company? Is to actually break in, yet steal nothing. And Helica set this whole thing up. And the only other person that knew was Wendell. She couldn't afford to let him or his sister expose her secret. I call that motive for murder and probable cause for a search warrant. Thank you. It doesn't make any sense. Why wouldn't Parker be there yet? There's thousands of people there. Maybe they just haven't spotted him yet. Why go through the trouble of getting press credentials if you're not going to use them? Unless he's pulling another head fake. Like the encryption system was a cover for the theft of the toxin. Military tactics. Always making sure we're a step behind. A step behind what? I mean, this has to be about revenge, so it has to be about Reed. Maybe he wants to do to Reed what Reed did to him. Take away the person he loves the most. His wife. Becky, why don't you turn around? Is it Castle? No, we have a hunch. Hunch. Defense Secretary Reeves office. This is Agent Beckett from the Attorney General's oh, investigative. Please. No, wait, hello? Okay. Castle, just stay with me. We're almost there. Well, hey there. You're home early. Hey, I couldn't wait to see you. So I picked up a bottle of wine on the way home. It's your favorite. Oh, that is such a big glass. What's the occasion? No occasion. I just figured this would be a great way for you to unwind after a long day at work. Oh, that's so nice. And where's your glass? Eyes are there. <laughs> Well, why don't we top that off for you, shall we? Once uh, we get all nice and relaxed, unwind, there we go. You can tell me all about your day. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're not trying to ply me with wine to find out what I know about this case, are you? Of course not. That's not what you're trying to do, is it? No. OK. Because if you were trying to find out what I know, that would mean you're stuck. I am not stuck. Good. Because I'm not stuck either. So you, so do, you do know, know something. something. Maybe. Maybe. All right, this is crazy. If we both have something, why don't we just trade? Castle, I can't. You know that. Oh, can't. What happened to that rebellious girl with a leather jacket and the motorcycle? Would she say can't? <sighs> she enforces the law now and drinks expensive wine. Then think about our victim. Are you really going to let a couple of silly rules stand in the way of bringing Shana justice? OK, fine. We'll do it just this once. For her. You, you first. first. We'll go at the same time. Ready? Yeah. She, she was looking into old, old police records at Radnor, at Radnor University. University. Wait, she had an old boyfriend who died at Radnor University? How long ago? Fifteen years. His name was Jeff Whalen. He drank too much at a party and fell out a window. If she was looking into old police records... And interested in homicide law? She must have thought that his death was more than just an accident. She was investigating a murder. And somehow that got her killed. Oh, my God, I missed this. <gasps> oh.